it with a heavy, heavy heart, Robert, that I write this letter. Because many people are saying, you're a traitor. Somebody seems to think you're a traitor. Now I know, and many other people know, you were not. You were a loved man, but you you know, you you know in your heart, you were also a very, a very hated man by um, a certain group of people. But my worry is what's going on today, um, the lies that are being spread, unconscionable lies that I can't believe people are saying about you. When I think of how you must have ran around the streets of Sunderland <coughs> and up in Scotland, I I doubt you ever thought you would, you know, end up where you did, um, live the life you did, uh, be the brave soldier you were, um, received the George Cross, um, and then many years later, cowards would sit in judgment and call you a traitor. Now many people are traitors, but you, you gave your all for this country. You gave your all for everyone in this country at a time when we were being bombed, when people were being murdered and you stepped forward and gave your life in a job you love doing. Now, the people who are saying you're a traitor obviously know nothing about you. They, you know, they come on and they say all these silly things, uh, especially one person, a person called um, Bly, Brian, who, um, likes to portray you as I don't think he knows what he's actually talking about Robert um, far from it in fact I'm sure he knows little about you but I just want to add that I think you were the most honourable man most honourable man who lost his life at the age of 28 to save the lives of many Now, Robert, even you wouldn't expect the enemies of that time or the enemies that you that you fought against to like you. In fact, you'd expect them to hate you, wouldn't you, Robert? But you wouldn't expect that an ordinary Englishman um, who's a fat pig and um, does nothing but lounge around all day causing trouble to call you a traitor. You really would not expect this, would you? For the England you knew then has gone, Robert. It has gone. The England you fought and died for is long gone. We have people who'd rather betray our own, our armed services, yeah, than to stand up for them. Not all. And we are still fighting the battle to remain as we were. So yes, it's with a heavy heart that I write this letter to you, Robert. Um, people can say what they like about you. The people who know, know, don't they? People who know, they know. But I'd just like to remind a few people of how uh, Robert actually met his death, yeah? Just in case um, people don't understand or people want to believe Fatty 
Yeah, because Fatty um, tends to have a big mouth and he shouts it loud and clear. So your death, as you know, Robert, on the evening of the 14th of May, 1977, Robert drove along to the Three Steps pub uh, in a village in South Omar. He um, was out, was working because he was a member of the intelligence corps and he was indeed working. And people have got to remember that this is um, hard for me. Um, because I don't understand why some people are calling you a traitor, Robert. I just don't get it. You know, but anyway, when you were in the pub, you told regulars at the pub that um, you were called Danny, a motor mechanic and a member of the official IRA from the Irish Republican Ardoin area in North Belfast. Yeah, that was your cover story. Um, yeah. Witnesses said that you um, got up and sang Republic folk songs and the broad band, what the broad black banner, um, with the band who were playing that night at around eleven forty-five p.m. He was abducted and. <coughs> was allegedly allegedly punched, whipped, pistol whipped and hit with a wooden post. He was shot dead in a field. He did not admit to his true identity. One of Robert's um, abductors, Terry McCormick, posed as a priest in order to try to get information out of Robert. But Robert would not say a word. According to McCormick, according to McCormick, Robert's last words was, bless me, Father. Claims that his body was disposed of by putting it through a mince grinder <clears throat> may have been dismissed as a myth. His disappearance did spark a large scale search throughout Ireland. The hunt in Northern Ireland was led by <clears throat> Major H. Jones. Hmm. He was a, um, Major Jones was also um, a colonel in the Parachute Regiment who was, a, again, um, he was awarded posthumously the Victoria Cross when he um, was killed in um, the Falklands War. You see, um, what a lot of people don't realise is that um, Major H. Jones and Robert, they were best of friends. Um, and Robert often met at Jones's house. And a four day search um, continued. Until they could confirm that um, Nairak was dead. Um, an addition of spotlight broadcasting, broadcasted on the 19th of June 2007 claimed that his body was not destroyed in a meat grinder as alleged by an unnamed IRA source, McCormick, who has been on the run in the United States for 30 years, 
because of his involvement in the killing. It was told by a senior IRA commander that he was buried on a farmland and reburied elsewhere. The location of the body's resting place remains a mystery. Nairak was one of three IRA victims whose graves have never been revealed and who are among those known as the disappeared. In May 2000, allegations were made that claiming, claiming that Nairak <coughs> had married and fathered a child with a woman with a woman named Neil Lester, also known as Una Flynn or Una Lister. In 2001, her, so, her son sought DNA testing and revealed the allegations to be untrue. Of course, they were untrue. Many allegations about um, Robert have been said and have been proven to be untrue. Um, In 1977, in November, Liam Towson, a 24-year-old IRA member from the village of just outside of Newry, was convicted of Nairac's murder. murder. Yeah. I just want to take a minute and imagine what his murder must have been like. On the 20th of May 2008, a 57-year-old IRA veteran, Kevin Crilly of Johannesburg County, Amar, was arrested by officers of the Police Service of Northern Ireland, the PSN. He had been on the run in the United States, but he returned to Northern Ireland under an alias. He was he was charged in the following the following day with the kidnapping and false imprisonment of Robert Nairak. In t November two thousand and nine, Crilly was also charged with the murder of Nairak at Newry Magistrate Court during a bail hearing on the two counts on which he had been charged in two thousand and eight. Crilly was cleared on all counts in two thousand and eleven. My God. As the judge said that they the prosecution had failed to prove intention or prior knowledge of on his part. Robert was awarded the um George Crosh in Cross in nineteen seventy nine. he'd have rather had his life than the George Cross but you know it's um, it is what it is and uh, there's some very ignorant people around but one day they will have to answer for their slander um, so <clears throat> we're now going to go on to um, what people have accused Robert of doing. Robert has been accused of an involvement in the murder of IRA member and collusion with um, lo loyalist paramilitaries. Allegations were made during uh, concerning Nairac in 1993. Uh, of course, Yorkshire Television, um, blah, de, blah, blah. We have evidence, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was also alleged by a former secret intelligence service operative, Captain Fred Halroyd, that Nairak admitted involvement um, in the assassination of IRA member John Francis Green on the 10th of Jan January. 1975, to him, 
Harold claimed in a New Statesman article uh, written by Duncan Campbell that Nyrak had boasted about Green's death and showed him a colour Polaroid photo of Green's corpse taken directly after his assassination. Do you see how gruesome they make it all? Um, oh, these claims were given more, more prominence when in 1987, Ken Livingston MP told the House of Commons that Nyrick was quite likely to have been the person who organised the killing of the three Miami show band musicians. My God. The, <clears throat> the evidence before the inquiry that Polaroid photograph allegedly taken by the killers after the murder was actually taken by a police officer on the following morning seriously undermines the evidence that Nyrak himself had been involved in the shooting. The picture derived from this is a man increasingly frustrated with the failure of the British authorities to take his claim seriously, who saw the threat to reveal a cross-border SAS assassination as perhaps his only remaining weapon to fight a secure, proper review of his own case. His allegations concerning Nyrak must be read with that in mind. So what this little report here is saying, um, that the person who claims he was involved with the death of the three, the three uh, Miami show band members is actually an ex-SAS officer himself who uh, was standing trial um, for something. And so he's, you know, he's got a grudge and he wants to blame, he wanted to blame Robert for it. But mud sticks. Mud sticks. And even though, you know, um, we know the, the name of the men who, um, who did the shooting, Robert McCormack, Robert Jackson. <coughs> and Harris Boyle. Um, that doesn't matter, you know, um, it's Robert's name that constantly gets brought up by cowards, like Brian. Um, it says here that in addition, serving Miami show down, show band members Steve Travers and Des McKee testified in court um, that an army officer with a crisp English accent oversaw the Miami attacks the implication being that this was an Iraq <laughs> oh an Iraq with his crisp English accent from Sunderland, yes. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm just talking about this to let you see that just how mud sticks and um, you can learn a lot if you research yourself about um, Mr. Nairak, Robert. But yeah, um, so because um, Brian can't leave, um, Robert alone. Anyone listening out there, you know, who knew Robert, you probably know he was no traitor and that he was a good man. In fact, the IRA people that murdered Robert were quoted as saying he was the bravest soldier they'd ever encountered whilst facing death he said nothing and betrayed no one and yet we have Brian calling this man a traitor yeah
Oh, oh, oh.